Hello everyone, in this video you will see how to implement the wall follower algorithm onto a robot using the popular open source robotics framework ROS, specifically using the ROS2 Humble Hawksbill version. Hi again. I am Girish Kumar, a robotics engineer, developer, an enthusiast, and an avid ROS programmer with C++ and Python. I am working with The Construct. If you don't know about them already, The Construct is a website that provides an online platform for anyone to learn robotics from scratch. If you are interested in learning robotics, you can find several courses here that will teach you how to design, build, and develop a robot from scratch using the Robot Operating System Framework, commonly known as ROS. Unlike many other internet websites, you get to work exclusively on a real robot while you are learning robotics at the construct. This video comprises of three major parts, the wall follower algorithm explanation, the demonstration with the robot with the simulation, and the demonstration with the real robot. This environment that you see here is the ROS development studio offered by the construct website. Here you will have all the components you require for programming with the ROS framework in one place. This is where I will show you the demonstration of the wall follower robot using the simulation and the real robot, the wall follower algorithm. This is the simplest algorithm that can be implemented on a robot for solving a maze or for exploring an unknown environment. A robot simply follows a wall on one of its sides. When it faces an obstacle in the front, it decides which direction to turn and then continues with the wall following behavior. The algorithm and the behavior can be modified based on the environment where the robot will be deployed. For the purpose of this video demonstration, I have created a ROS2 package compatible with both C++ and Python. The algorithm logic in both the languages are exactly the same, so I will just show you how the package is structured. The package contains four major folders and two files. The SRC folder contains the C++ programs. The scripts folder contains the Python programs. The RWIS folder contains user interface configuration for RWIS, and the launch folder contains the ROS2 launch files to run C++ and Python executables. The CMakeList file contains compilation and build instructions for this package, and the package.xml file contains the basic information about the package and the list of dependencies for compile time and runtime support. The wall follower program contains eight major functions the main function, the class constructor, the laser scanner callback, the odometry callback, the control callback, the function to calculate the Euclidean distance, the function to calculate Euler angles from quaternions, and finally, the print function to print control callback information as debug messages on the terminal screen. The main function does the following sequence it initializes ROS2 and instantiates the wall follower node. Then it creates a multi threaded executor and adds the wall follower node to the executor. Then it starts spinning the executor and finally shuts down ROS2 when the main loop completes. The constructor does the following sequence. First, it initializes the command velocity publisher. Then it initializes the scan and odometry subscribers. Finally, it initializes the main control callback that controls the robot movement. The scan callback does the following sequence. It initially checks for the scan info done flag. If the flag is not set, it uses one iteration to get the information from laser scan. During this one time sequence, it gets the minimum and maximum scan angles and ranges. It then calculates the range size, angle range, and angle increment. It then calculates the indexes for right, front and left scans. Then it calculates the from and to indexes for the right, front and left scan. Finally, it sets the scan info done flag to true and exits the loop after printing the information. When the flag is set, it simply loops through the scan ranges to calculate the right, front and left scan values and then saves the range values as class variables. The odometry callback does the following sequence. It initially checks for the odom info done flag. If it is not set, it uses one iteration to get the information from the odometry. During this one time sequence, it gets the initial x, y, and yaw values. It then sets the previous x, y, and yaw values to the initial x, y, and yaw values. Finally, it sets the odom info done flag to true and exits the loop after printing the information. When the flag is set, it simply gets the current x, y, and yaw values to calculate the Euclidean distance and then sets the previous x, y, and yaw values to the current x, y, and yaw values. The control callback is the main function that implements the wall follower algorithm. It does the following sequence. It initially checks for the wall found flag is set or not. Based on this flag, the control callback does four subsequences. If the wall found flag is not set and the front range is not less than front threshold, it sets the robot to move slowly by publishing slow linear velocity value. It then exits the loop. If the wall found flag is not set and the front range is less than the front threshold, it sets the wall found flag to true and sets the velocities to zero, thereby stopping the robot. It then does the following subsequence. It checks if the side chosen variable is set by the user. If the side chosen value is not right or not left, it automatically chooses a side. 
If the right range is less than the left range, then the side chosen value is set to right. If the right range is more than the left range, then the side chosen value is set to left. In other cases, it does nothing. If the wall phone flag is set and the front range is less than the front threshold, it sets the robot to move slowly by publishing slow linear velocity value. It then does the following subsequence. It checks if the side chosen is right or left. If the side chosen is right, it sets the angular velocity to turn the robot left. If the side chosen is left, it sets the angular velocity to turn the robot right. In other cases, it does nothing. If the wall phone flag is set and the front range is more than the front threshold, it sets the robot to move fast by publishing fast linear velocity value. It then does the following subsequence. It checks if the side chosen value is set to right or left. If the side chosen is right, it does the following subsequence. If the right range is less than the minimum side threshold, it sets the angular velocity to turn left. If the right range is more than the maximum side threshold, it sets the angular velocity to turn right. In other cases, it sets the angular velocity to zero. If the side chosen is left, it does the following subsequence. If the left range is less than the minimum side threshold, it sets the angular velocity to turn right. If the left range is more than the maximum side threshold, it sets the angular velocity to turn left. In other cases, it sets the angular velocity to zero. Finally, all the subsequences of the control callback publishes the velocity values to the robot. It then prints the iteration information and ends the loop. The calculate distance function does the following sequence. It gets the previous and current x and y values, and then it calculates the Euclidean distance, and finally it returns the distance value. The Euler from quaternion function does the following sequence. It gets the quaternions x, y, z, and w, and it calculates the Euler angle, and it finally returns the Euler angles as radians and degrees. The print info function does the following sequence. First, it prints the left, front, and right scan ranges. Then it prints the current x, y, and yaw odometry values and the distance traveled. Finally, it prints the current linear and angular velocities of the robot. Now I will show you how the wall follower algorithm works on a robot in simulation. So I will start by setting up the simulation environment. First, I will launch the gazebo simulation and set a comfortable view angle. I would like to use the top down view. Then I will launch Arvis to visualize how the robot perceives its environment. Then I will launch the Telio program just for safety to take control of the robot if something goes wrong when the program is running. Before launching the program, I will quickly compile the package from scratch. I will start with the C++ version and show you how the robot does the initial wall finding behavior and how it gets into the wall following behavior. I will stop the robot program here to explain what has happened. Initially, I launched the C++ version of the launch file. The program starts and initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control timer. Then it prints the initial odometry information, followed by the laser scanner information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a side. In this case, the wall is closer on the left side, so the side chosen is left. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. Now I will stop the program and show you how the robot behaves when there is a wall on the other side of the room. I will stop the program here again to explain what has happened. I launch the C++ version of the launch file again. The program starts and initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control time. It then prints the initial odometry information, followed by the laser scan information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a side. In this case, the wall is closer on the right side, so the side chosen is right. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. Now I will stop the program and show you how the robot behaves with the Python version of the same wall follower program.
I will stop the robot here to explain what has happened. Now I have launched the Python version of the launch file. The program starts and then it initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control timer. Then it prints the initial odometry information, followed by the laser scan information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a site. In this case, the wall is closer onto the left side, so the site chosen is left. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. I will stop the program here to show you how the robot behaves when there is a wall on the other side of the robot. I will stop the program here to explain what has happened. I launch the Python version of the launch file again. The program starts and initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control timer. It then prints the initial odometry information followed by the laser scan information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a site. In this case, the wall is closer on the right side, so the site chosen is right. Now I will again bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. I will stop the robot here. Now I will bring back the robot to its initial position and terminate all the programs. This concludes the demonstration of the wall follower algorithm on the simulation. Now I am connected to the real robot present in the offices of the construct at Barcelona, Spain. So I will start by setting up the real robot environment to show you how the algorithm works on the real robot. Since I am working directly on the real robot, I start by launching Arbus first to visualize what the real robot perceives in its environment. The Arbus output will not be exactly the same as in simulation since the odometry of the real robot is subjected to change. Next, I will launch the Telia program just for safety again to take control of the robot if something goes wrong when the program is running. And before launching the program, I will quickly compile the package from scratch. Just like in the simulation, I will show you how the robot does the initial wall finding behavior and how it gets into the wall following behavior, first with C and then with Python. I will stop the program here to explain what has happened. Initially, I launched the C version of the launch file. The program starts and initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control time. Then it prints the initial odometry information, followed by the laser scan information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a site. In this case, the wall is closer to the left side, so the site chosen is left. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. I will stop the program here to show you how the robot behaves when there is a wall on the other side of the robot. I will stop the program here again to explain what has happened. I launch the C++ version of the launch file again. The program starts and it initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control timer. It then prints the initial odometry information followed by the laser scan information. Then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead 
and automatically chooses a sign. In this case, the wall is closer to the right side, so the side chosen is right. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. Now I will stop the program and show you how the robot behaves with the Python version of the same wall follower program. I will stop the robot here to explain what has happened. I have launched the Python version of the launch file. The program starts and initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control timer. It then prints the initial odometry information, followed by the laser scanner information. And then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a side. In this case, the wall is closer onto the left side, so the side chosen is left. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it actually works. I will stop the program here and show you how the robot behaves when there is a wall on the other side of the robot. I will stop the program here to explain what has happened. I again launch the Python version of the launch file. The program node starts and then initializes the publisher, subscribers, and the control time. Then it prints the initial odometry information followed by the laser scanner information. And then it keeps moving slowly forward until a wall or obstacle is found ahead and automatically chooses a side. In this case, the wall is closer to the right side, so the side chosen is right. Now I will bring the robot back to its initial position and start the program again to see how it works. Now I will stop the program and bring the robot back to its initial position and terminate all the programs. All right, so this concludes the demonstration of the wall follower algorithm on the real robot. All right, everyone, so that is all for the implementation and the demonstration of the wall follower algorithm with the ROS2 framework. I hope you all have understood the concept and enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.